being rude to a customer service costs 300 pounds. Back in 2003, I was working as a minimum wage counter monkey in a computer parts store. We built a few computers, but mostly sold individual components for people who knew what they were doing. Now, certain components, CPUs and hard drives are unrestockable, which means unless they are sold faulty, you can't return them for a refund. Technically, the restocking fee is 100% of the cost. Basically, they're the underwear of the PC hardware world. Nobody wants something that could have been physically but not visibly damaged. So, rude customer, RC, comes into the store to my counter. He shows me his receipt from last week including a shuttle SN45G board and an Athlon XP3200 CPU. I immediately know what he's going to say. You see, the board was designed to take a CPU but it came out first and once the CPU was released, Shuttle sent a one page PDF explaining that when you first power it up on that PC, you had to hold down the insert or it wouldn't boot. This is a 20 second job that the least tech savvy person could do. RC tells me that his computer won't boot because the CPU is broken, so he needed a new CPU. If I recall it, cost about 300 pounds, near 500 pounds in 2019 money. I had a stack of those printed PDFs to hand. I'd already given out several that week and started to explain that the CPU was fine, but he just needed to No, He interrupted, the CPU is broken, I need a new one. This is a well-known problem, it's really easy to fix. All you need to, I need a new CPU. I have a sheet explaining all of, now RC puts the most insulting, deliberately idiot sounding voice. It is broken, I need a new one. I look down, close my eyes, take a deep breath, and put on my best customer service smile and voice. Okay, here's your invoice. That'll be 300 pounds. How would you like to pay? RC walks out of the store two minutes later holding his shiny new CPU, his wallet 300 pounds later. In all of my jobs, I've gone out of my way to try to help people, but this time, this chuckle, knowing that because RC was rude and refused to listen, one, he wasted 300 pounds on something he didn't need. Two, he won't be able to return it or get a refund. And three, he still won't be able to boot his computer. Moral of the story, if an expert in your problem is trying to help you, listen and don't be rude. Not so hard, is it? I love the entitled customer, the one that knows your job better than you know your job. Listen, buddy. As much as you think you know what you're talking about, that person that you're talking to has handled that product a lot longer than you. I guarantee it. I had a customer not too recently at the pizza place I work at insist that we use cornmeal on our bread. Well, the pizza place has been around for 40 years and has never, never, ever, ever used cornmeal on her crust. But she insisted she knew what she was talking about. And when I told her that we didn't carry it, she's like, well, if you can't come up with it in the next five seconds of this conversation, I'm just going to go. And I'm like, I'm sorry. We just, we've never put cornmeal on our crust. Click. You got it, ma'am. You know everything. Congratulations. You're hungry now. Can we fix it? Apparently not. But OSHA can. This is a story of how I and some co-workers caused a massive OSHA investigation that ended up costing the paper mill we worked at millions of dollars and several higher ups their jobs. I should probably clarify for those unfamiliar that OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration, a US government organization that enforces various rules about workplaces designed to make them reasonably safe. This was years ago when I worked security at a local paper mill which I have posted some stories of elsewhere, specifically at our Tales of From Security. One of our many duties was to patrol through the mill and keep an eye out for safety hazards, one of which was the roof leak like a sieve. When it rained out there, it would be cascade of water falling from the ceiling and forming pools of sometimes ankle deep water all over the place. This would be an issue enough, but some of these waterfalls of annoyance fell on electrical boxes, high voltage boxes specifically. The boxes were sealed enough that nobody got electrocuted, but it was only a matter of time until it happened, and I'm honestly surprised it never did, given how poorly they were maintained at the time. I and the other security personnel had made many reports of it every time it rained, 
but nothing was ever done about it. And the workers were as pissed about it as we were. It all came to a head during hurricane season. As my name might imply, I'm from the Gulf Coast where some pretty bad hurricanes have passed through. This particular year, we had some pretty torrential rains pass through that made the mill much resemble the swamp that surrounds it. It was so bad that the pit in the mechanics bay flooded and had to be pumped out. Several months before this, we had had a person electrocuted due to faulty lockout procedures, so nobody was willing to take chances with those HV boxes standing in what was now 5 inch deep pool of water. Rather than filing yet another report, my supervisor decided to speak directly with the safety director about it. His response was that they had passed all their inspections and if OSHA hadn't seen it as a problem, then it wasn't a problem and the people who had been avoiding walking through the accidents waiting to happen were just being babies. Furthermore, he instructed us to stop reporting the same stuff to him over and over. If we thought it was such a big deal, then we should take it to someone who could fix it. We knew he meant the maintenance department, but that's not what he said. It should be noted that at this point that when I did my patrols, I made it a point to stop and chat with folks and had built up a good report with many of them. They knew what was going on in their areas and they'd often tell me about stuff that they should be included in my reports that I might have missed or had little way of knowing. So it was that when I innocently, that's my story and I'm sticking to it, related to some of the guys in those areas what had been said. We got some ideas, I didn't know the term malicious compliance back then, but the concept was not foreign. We took pictures of the boxes, complete with warning labels, corroded conduits, and the vertebral lakes around them. Then each of us filed complaints with OSHA about unsafe working conditions. OSHA takes their job very, very seriously. A couple weeks later, I show up for my shift to a fucking swarm of activity. OSHA is there for a full inspection. See, every time they had an inspection before, the mill had been able to steer the inspectors away from the certain areas, but not this time. This isn't just some passive see anything, nope, not really inspection. This is a full on extra long gloves, bend over the table. You might feel a slight pressure as the proctologist whose fingers look to each be the size of bananas fist you up the elbow for inspection. It drags on for days. In the end, the mill had to replace the roofs, ventilation, some catwalks that were so close to falling apart they could have run for public office. Multiple fail safes had been stuck open for so long they'd be rusted into uselessness. The corroded storage racks that you really don't want the multi-ton rolls of paper making a break for it. A huge portion of the electrical system, the fire suppression system, the goddamn H2S sensors which had apparently not worked in years, and a bunch of other stuff I don't remember offhand, but you get the idea. H2S is hydrogen sulfide gas, poisonous, corrosive, and highly flammable. Plants and mills where it is present utilize sensors to alert personnel when the concentration of gas is too high. Exposure to high concentrations can cause long-term damage and or death, or cause explosions. It is very, very common at paper mills and causes the rotten egg smell that paper mills are known for. The bill totals in the millions of dollars, both in actually getting up to the par with the penalties imposed on the company, the head of safety got canned without severance from what I've heard, and the assistant director of operations retired shortly afterwards. I don't know what, if anything, happened to the director himself, the OFC, he had connections even further up the change. All because the head of safety told us to take it to someone who can fix it. Well, we did. OSHA regulations may be bollocks sometimes, but they've got your back when companies are being run by douche canoes. Douche canoe! Ah, it's one of my favorite, like, insults you can call somebody because there's just no coming back from it. You can't even retort from it. Put that no you card back. Ah, I see that Uno reverse up your sleeve. It ain't working. You're a douche canoe. Live with it. Own up to it. But honestly, I have worked with companies like this before where they had a lot of violations that were on the, um dangerous side never actually ended up calling OSHA at any point in time though I did threaten once when it involved a bathroom and feces literally smeared everywhere and I will not touch that of course according to OSHA you're not supposed to touch human bodily waste so it's not in the job description and I looked at my boss and like ain't happening buddy ain't happening just just not happening 
So I hope you guys really enjoyed this uh, reading. If you did, tell me in the comment section below. Tell me what you thought about it. Uh, again, I'm trying out this new form of reading on this channel. I just want to know what you guys think. So if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell icon and hit the like button too. Because it tells other people that you actually like the content that I'm doing. And it makes them want to like it too. You guys have been great. You guys have been awesome. And as usual, as always, my friends, stay frosty and keep moving forward.